Well, welcome viewers all over the world. We're here today at the Prayer Lake in Australia. You know, you've heard of prayer mountains, prayer resorts, prayer islands, but here today is a prayer lake. And we're here today, we're going to pray some prayer points on self-deliverance. You know, is self-deliverance possible? Can a Christian deliver themselves of demons? Yes, it is possible if you are a Christian. As a Christian or a believer, you have the same authority as any pastor or prophet or bishop who ministers deliverance to another. You have the same authority because in Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, I've given you power and authority to trample on scorpions, snakes and thorns and to overcome all the power of the enemy. You see, as Christians, we have the armor of God at our disposal. We have the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We have our offensive and defensive weapons. But today, too many Christians are walking walking around with the armor of God, but they are not using it. They are not using the sword of the spirit. They are not using the shield of faith. They are not putting on the helmet of salvation. They're not putting on the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace. They're not putting on the belt of truth. And so they keep having to rely on others. They are equipped with the offensive and defensive weapons, but they are not using those weapons. Here today to pray prayers of self-deliverance. And so Jesus said in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17, that Jesus plainly promised those who believe they shall cast out demons. So as a Christian, as a child of God, you have the same authority as any other pastor or bishop or prophet who ministers deliverance to another because you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus said in this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Can Christians be attacked by demons? Can Christians be subjected to demons? This is possible because of wrongs or mistakes. When you commit wrongs or mistakes, you enter into the track for Satan to give the opportunity to attack. The story of the prodigal son, he left his father's house and took his inheritance and went off to a distant land. This is the parable of Jesus Christ. He went off to a distant land and began to spend all his money, all of his inheritance on wild living, on prostitutes, so on and so forth. And when he ran out of his money, he found himself being hired out to a citizen of that country. And so he found himself being hired to demons. And so as Christians, don't allow demons to hire you, fire the demons. Don't be hired by demons, fire the demons. And so as he found himself being hired out to another person of another country, you know, attending to pigs, the Bible says that he came to his senses and he realized his mistake and he said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. It's so much better in my father's house than it is over here. He began to realize his mistakes. He began to realize that it's so much better to be in the position as a child of God than it is to be a hired person of demons. And so he began to repent, come to his senses. And you see, as Christians, Christians can wrong or make mistakes and when you wrong or make mistakes, it puts you on track for demons to hire you. It puts you on, on track for demons to to attack you. And so Christians can have demonic attacks or be subjected to demons because of wrongs or mistakes, because it is your wrongs or mistakes that Satan uses to hire you, to attack you. And so as Christians, don't be hired by demons, fire the demons. That is why it is of absolute importance that when you make a wrong or mistake, the greatest opportunity that Jesus Christ has given us is the opportunity to correct our mistakes. Whether your sin is big or small, Jesus is able to forgive them all. When you make a mistake, as we all do, don't run from God, run to God. Because God loves repentant souls. He welcomes them and He forgives them. The worst of sins can be forgiven. You see, wrongs or mistakes to Christians makes them to see their 
need for God the more, makes them to pray the more, makes them to fast the more, makes them to believe God the more. But to unbelievers, their mistakes pushes them further away from God. Their mistakes makes them to distance themselves the more away from God. But Christians, when they make mistakes, it makes them to see their need for God the more. It makes them to pray the more. It makes them to believe God the more. It makes them to fast the more. Mistakes or wrongs to Christians is a blessing because it makes them to see their need for God the more. You know, the Bible says, Jesus, I pray that your faith will not fail. And it is because there will be events, trials and tribulations that will try to take us out of faith, to cut our relationship with God, to cut our dependence on God. There's going to be trials that Satan and demons will use to try and cut off our relationship with God. And Jesus said, in this world, there are trials and tribulations but take heart, I have overcome the world. And Jesus said in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 19, that I have given you power and authority to trample on scorpions, snakes, and thorns, and to overcome all the power of the enemy, that scorpions, snakes, demons, and, and all kinds of uh, challenges will come, but Jesus has given us the power and the authority to overcome. But we need to learn to use and exercise this power and authority because the Bible says in the book of James resist the devil by faith in Christ and he will flee from you being a Christian does not mean that you will not have demonic attacks being a Christian does not mean that you will not make mistakes or wrongs but as Christians we are believers in Christ what does it mean to be a believer we believe in Christ Jesus we believe in the finished works of our Lord Jesus Christ and so when the prodigal son began to repent he began to make a change of mind he repented and had a change of heart and began to move towards God you see as Christians, as children of God, it is so important the area of repentance. And to repent is to have a self-examination. You need to self-examine your lives and discover the areas and the avenues that Satan is using to attack you, that Satan is using to capture you. And it's very important that we self-examine our lives because your weakness is the avenue that Satan uses to attack you. You know, you might have an avenue of lust, an avenue of pride, an avenue of jealousy, an avenue of pornography, an avenue of envy, an avenue. There are so many different avenues. And so some people have one avenue, but then there are also other people that have neighborhoods. There's just so many avenues that Satan uses to capture them. And so it is important that as Christians that we identify and acknowledge our weakness, because when you identify and acknowledge your weakness, it is victory itself. It is at that point that Jesus can come in to bring you in to balance. And so when you identify and acknowledge your weakness through self-examination and you discover that area, you can bring it to Jesus in repentance and the Holy Spirit will empower you with His grace to overcome. It is the grace of God that empowers us to live the holy and righteous life in Christ Jesus. And so when the prodigal son repented through self-examination, he identified and acknowledged weakness, he began to make his way back to God. The Bible says that the father saw him from a distance and he ran to the son. As soon as he saw that the prodigal son began to repent, began to, to identify and acknowledge his weakness and begin to sincerely from his heart repent of his sins and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. As soon as he made a change, change of direction and he began to move towards the father the father went to the son the bible says that when you make one step to god as you make steps to god he's going to make steps to you so as he made that step of repentance and faith the father ran to the son and he embraced the son and he kissed him and then he brought him back to the father's house and he said welcome back to the family of god welcome back to your seat your seat is always here you see as christians when you make wrongs or mistakes and you identify and acknowledge your mistakes your wrongs or mistakes is not sin unless it makes you to run away from god when you run away from god it becomes a wrong or mistake when your mistakes and wrongdoings makes you to draw closer to god draw nearer to god then you remain on your seat 
but it is only when your wrong or mistake makes you to go out and away from the presence of God back into the world. And so the father brought the son back to the house, said to them, bring the fattened calf that is the best meat, bring the best robe and clothe him with the best robe, put a ring on his finger, put sandals on his feet, because this son of mine that was dead is now alive again. He was once lost, but is now found. And you see, when you identify and acknowledge your weakness and you repent with all of your heart from all your sins, Jesus the Father comes to you and welcomes you and ushers you back into your seat, back into your position as a child of God. The ring represented the power and the authority that Jesus had given the Son. The best robe was he was clothed with righteousness. You see, the hired servants didn't have sandals. It was the sons in the house who had the sandals. We're going to pray prayers of self-deliverance right now. The Bible says in Joel 2 verse 32 that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So right now, let us give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercies endure forever. So right now, let us give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for His goodness. Give thanks to the Lord for His mercy and divine favor. Give thanks to the Lord for being with you all the way along. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your love. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for paying the supreme price on the cross of Calvary. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for dying for our sins, for resurrecting for us, and for ascending at the right hand of the throne of God, so that you could make our way to heaven. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we are seated in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the keys to loose and to bound, that whatever we say here on earth shall be said in heaven, that whatever we ask for on earth shall be asked for in heaven, that whatever we loose here on earth shall be loosed in heaven, that whatever we bound here on earth shall be bound in heaven. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. A million thanks are not enough, Lord Jesus Christ, for what you have done for us. We thank Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for delivering us. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. We thank you, Lord, for healing us. We thank you, Lord, for saving us. We thank you, Lord, for rescuing us. We thank you, Lord, that you are a good God. We thank you, Lord, for your peace that transcends and surpasses all understanding. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all the way along. You have picked us up every time we fall. Father, every time we wrong or mistake, we thank you, Lord. The greatest opportunity that you have given us is the opportunity to correct our mistakes. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are a loving God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the righteous one, the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world. Father, we thank you, Lord, that every sin that we have committed in the past, in the present, in the future, has been forgiven, has been washed and cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you, Lord, you have blessed us with the faith to access that forgiveness, to access that blood of Christ through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have made the way plain. Blessing, healing, deliverances, and miracles shall be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are our shepherd. We shall lack nothing, that you make us to lie down in green pastures, that you lead us beside still waters, that you restore our soul, that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, through the valley of hard and difficult times, through the valley of trials and tribulations, we shall fear no evil because you are with us, O God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our head with oil oil, our cup shall overflow. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord in Jesus Christ's name. So the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 1 from verses 5 to 10, the Bible says, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, 
as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all unrighteousness. When we begin to walk in the light, when we begin to confess our sins, when we begin to renounce those bad habits, we begin to walk in the light as the Father is in the light and we have fellowship with the believers. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, purifies us from all sin. So if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. This is the great promise of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we can correct our mistakes simply by confessing them. So right now, anywhere you are all over the world, begin to confess your sins before the Lord. Begin to confess your sins because the Bible says the Lord Jesus Christ is faithful and just to forgive you all your sins and to purify you from all unrighteousness. Begin to confess your sins, sins in your thoughts, sins and words, sins and deeds, sins and actions. Begin to confess your sins, knowingly or unknowingly. Begin to confess those sins. Father, forgive us, O Lord, all our sins. Purify us from all unrighteousness. Confess your sins, sins of your ancestors, sins of pride, sins of lust, sins of anger, sins of idolatry, sins of covetousness, that is coveting, sins of witchcraft, sins of tarot cards, sins of of palm readers begin to confess all those sins from your past begin to confess them because the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to purify you from all unrighteousness continue to confess your sins whether they are big or small Jesus is able to forgive them all continue to pray continue to pray to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you all your sins and to purify you from all unrighteousness for the Lord is faithful and just and will forgive you all all your sins. Continue to confess, continue to confess, continue to confess. The Lord is omnipresent. The Lord is omnipotent. The Lord is everywhere. Continue to pray, continue to pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. So the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 28 verses 13 that whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. You see, whoever conceals their sin, whoever hides their sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. So right now, let us begin to confess and renounce those things, those things that you've been hiding, hiding in your phones, hiding in your bedrooms, hiding in your private place, hiding in your family, whatever sins that you are concealing, begin to expose them right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Begin to confess and renounce those sins. Begin to confess and renounce those bad habits. Begin to confess and renounce them right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Begin to confess and renounce those bad habits. Continue to confess and renounce them because the Lord is faithful and just to deliver you. Continue to pray, continue to pray. Whatever sin in your life, begin to confess and renounce those sins. Confess and renounce those relationships with demons, those relationships with witchcraft. Right now, continue to pray, continue to confess. Begin to speak them out. Call them by name. Confess and renounce every spirit of idolatry, every spirit of of witchcraft, every spirit of jealousy, every spirit of pride, every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of lying, every spirit of killing, stealing, and destruction. Continue to confess and renounce those sins right now. Continue to confess and renounce. Continue to confess and renounce. Continue to confess and renounce right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I renounce the spirit of poverty. I renounce the spirit of lust. I renounce the spirit of idolatry. I renounce Renounce every generational curse. Continue to renounce every spirit of adultery, every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit that is not of Jesus. Continue to confess and renounce them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every bad habit that Satan has used as a chain to connect him to yourself, be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Name that chain and say, be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Be broken right 
now in the name of Jesus. Whatever chain Satan might have used to connect himself to myself, I break that chain right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I break that chain right now in the name of Jesus. I confess and renounce that chain right now in the name of Jesus. Be broken, 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 be broken. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. The Bible says in the book of Joel 2 verse 32, that if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be delivered. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be blessed. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be free. Right now, let us begin to call on the name of the Lord. Let us begin to call on the name of the Lord. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is is Jehovah Jireh our provider. He is Jehovah Nissi. Continue to call on the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we call upon your holy name. King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the great deliverer, the great healer, the great provider. We call upon your holy name, O Lord. Deliver us from our afflictions. Deliver us from our bondages. Deliver us from our family curses. Deliver us from from our generational curses. Deliver us from the spirit of depression. Deliver us from the spirit of depression. Deliver us from the spirit of depression. Deliver us from the yoke of bondage. Deliver us from the spirit of lust. Deliver us from the spirit of pride. Deliver us from the yoke of bondage. Father, we call upon your holy name. We call upon your holy name. Jesus Christ, King of Kings. Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords. We call upon your holy name. Continue to call upon His holy name anywhere you are, in your house, in your car, in the airplane, wherever you are right now watching this program. Continue to call upon His holy name. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus Christ, the beginning and the end. We call upon Your holy name, O Lord. Deliver us in the name of Jesus. Deliver us in the name of Jesus. Deliver us in the name of Jesus. Deliver us from the yoke of bondage. Deliver us from the spirit of depression. Deliver us from our family generational curses. Deliver us from the yoke of bondage. Deliver us from our bad habits. Deliver us from every demonic pronouncement over our lives. Deliver us from every covenant with demons. Deliver us from every covenant of bondage. Deliver us from every Every yoke of trauma. Deliver us from every trauma from our childhood. Deliver us, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Continue to call upon the name of the Lord because whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be blessed. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord, continue to call upon his name. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, our healer. Jesus Christ, our deliverer. Jesus Christ, our provider. Jesus Christ, our savior. Jesus Christ, our redeemer. Call upon his holy name anywhere you are. Jesus has given you the authority to, for self-deliverance. Jesus has given you the authority to cast out demons. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, every demonic spirit in your life, every spiritual entity causing crisis in your life, command it out right now in the name of Jesus. Command it out 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 in the name of Jesus. You spiritual entity causing crisis, I command you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Every thought of unrighteousness, out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of lust, out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of poverty, out in the name of Jesus. Every generational curse, out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of depression, out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of witchcraft out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of idolatry out in the name of Jesus. Continue to command them out. Continue to command them out. Continue to command them out. The Bible says in the book of James that if you resist the devil by faith in Christ he will flee from you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
The devil in your life, flee right now in the name of Jesus. Begin to flee 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 in the name of Jesus. I command you out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to call that demon by its name. Command it out in the mighty name of Jesus. Command it out in the mighty name of Jesus. This is not your temple. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I command it out. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, continue to pray, continue to pray. This temple is not your temple. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus has given me power and authority to trample on those scorpion snakes and thorns. I command it out in the mighty name of Jesus. I command it out in the mighty name of Jesus. I command it out in the mighty name of Jesus. I command it out in the mighty name of Jesus. I command it out in the mighty name of Jesus. I command it out, out. Out, 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 out. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Right now, begin to rejoice. Begin to rejoice. Begin to share your testimony. Begin to walk in the light of your testimony. I am delivered. Jesus is my deliverer. I am blessed. Jesus is my provider. I am saved. Jesus is my savior. I am redeemed. Jesus is my redeemer. Continue to walk in the light of your testimony because when the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. Continue to share your testimony. I am born again. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am linked up with God. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Redeemer. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Continue to walk in the light of your testimony. Continue to walk in the light as He is in the light because you have fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to confess who you are. I am seated in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the blessed plate of righteousness. Jesus Christ's word is truth, the belt of truth. Jesus Christ has restored our peace with God, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith with which to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. And you have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Begin to rejoice. God bless you viewers all over the world. Thank you for joining us on today's program here on the beautiful Prayer Lake in Australia. This gorgeous place, this wonderful place to spend time with the Lord. The Lake of Glory, uh, the prayer lake here in Australia. God bless you all. Thank you very much. If you have a testimony, share the testimony in the comments below. I've also got a testimony line. I'll leave it in the description in the comments section. Bless you all. Thank you very much for joining us. And for those of you who have joined us for the very first time and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, say this prayer with me right now. Father, I'm a sinner. I need you as my Lord and Savior. I need you as my partner in life. Come into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood save my soul today in Jesus Christ's name I want to welcome you to the family of God make a list of promises that God's word has for you and by faith believe receive and confess them daily in Jesus Christ's name we pray join a living church anywhere you're around around the world let the Holy Spirit guide you to a living church in Jesus name God bless you